We're over a month into patch 10.2 and the Mythic Plus meta has already seen some pretty big changes. Right now, there are two tanks competing for the number one spot, while the DPS meta is an absolute war zone, and Demonology Warlocks might actually be way better than most people think. Finally, on the healing side, Holy Paladins have fallen behind, but we will tell you why that might actually be a good thing. So stay tuned for a fresh update to the Mythic Plus meta in Dragonflight Season 3. Like all of our videos, this tier list was made in collaboration with players from Echo and Method, coming off a historic race to world first. We worked with these same players to produce hundreds of exclusive guides that can only be found at skillcap.com. So after this video, be sure to check out our website to learn how you can gain at least 500 IO score risk-free this season. For now, back to the video. First up, while the tanking meta hasn't really changed since our initial prediction, there is one spec moving up our ranks. We initially predicted Prot Paladin would be good, but now it's clearly one of the best tanks in Mythic Plus. Performance on the PTR was skewed due to lower item levels, but now with full access to Season 3 gear, Paladins are a huge winner from secondary stat scaling. With increased item levels, Prot is one of the beefiest tanks in the 5-man format, and is a great addition to any group considering its wide array of utility and crowd control options. These are especially valuable given the relatively lackluster performance of Holy Paladin so far. While Prot might do less overall damage compared to Vengeance Demon Hunter, it more than makes up for it with the sheer amount of utility the spec offers, which is why we're bumping it up to the S tier for this update. And hey, would you look at that, barely any changes to our tanking tier list. As we just mentioned, Vengeance continues to excel as predicted in Mythic Plus, being carried by its impressive damage output and mob control. We're still keeping our eyes on Blood DK, as now with region-wide access to the Legendary, its stocks could continue to rise throughout the season. As we said last time, every tank is actually in a pretty good spot, and despite some hiccups, even Guardian Druids are pushing high keys. Now it's time to move on to melee, where we have one melee climbing up the ranks. First up is Assassination Rogue. While Outlaws seem to be the standout spec on PTR, Asa is definitely up there with some of the best melee in the format. The main reason for this? Damage, as Asa can do some very impressive numbers on both single target and AoE. But Assassination isn't the only melee seeing gains recently. Because there's one more melee moving up in the rankings, Enhancement Shamans, who will actually be moving up to the a tier. As you probably know by now, Enhancement is a wall of stops, with an efficient range kick combined with some AoE CC, which come in handy for the amount of spell damage we're seeing this season. The spec also received some quality of life improvements in 10.2, and as a result, continues to put out some impressive numbers. Even though Shaman might not have the best defensive kit, Enhancement still is definitely worth picking up in Season 3. But enough discussion about our winners, let's move on to the three specs we initially overvalued in the preseason. First up is Outlaw Rogue, who we're moving down from the S tier to a respectable A plus tier. We don't want to give you the impression that Outlaw is suddenly worse, but instead we simply overvalued the spec in our initial predictions. One thing we overlooked was the target cap on Blade Flurry, which gives the spec less value on massive AoE pulls, where Demon Hunter becomes a clear winner. With this season containing a lot of potential for pulls over 8 mobs, this weakness does make Outlaw noticeably worse than all the Illidan fanboys. With that said, Outlaw continues to do well on smaller pulls and on single target. Combine this with a good defensive kit and unique controls, rogues are still a solid addition to many groups. The second melee we overvalued was Windwalker Monk, who we're moving down to the B tier. Once again, our initial predictions were a bit skewed due to PTR scaling, and as many people were quick to point out in the comments, Monks are probably not an A tier melee at the moment. On the bright side, the spec did receive a flat 6% damage buff in recent tuning, which it seems to desperately need. The final melee we overvalued was Feral Druid. One of Blizzard's goals with the mini rework to Feral in 10.2 was to give it more single target damage at the cost of AoE. Among other things, this included a tier set based around a single target bleed, which gave Feral a showing in the race to world first. Unfortunately, this doesn't really translate well to Mythic Plus, where obviously more AoE damage is needed. So for the meantime, we will be bumping Feral back down to the B tier. But before we recap melee, we have one potential wild card to monitor going into the midseason. Widely considered one of the weaker DPS in Mythic Plus, Unholy DK might be making some gains in the near future. With recent damage buffs and access to the new Legendary Axe, it's possible that Unholy might be moving up the ranks. Unholy always seems to pop up during the MDI thanks to its impressive AoE damage on massive pulls, but otherwise falls short at higher key levels where it has some noticeably low representation. All things considered, we will be keeping Unholy on the B tier once again. 
This brings us to our updated melee tier list. It shouldn't surprise you that Demon Hunter is still on top. In fact, it's so good that we've even moved Outlaw down in order to reflect the sheer dominance of DH. Brett Paladins is also continuing to perform as we predicted and are great additions to any group this season. We currently have courses for some of these melee specs right now at skillcap.com. So if you want to stay ahead this season with advanced guides covering damage, utility, mechanics, and more, be sure to check us out after this. Now it's time to move on to range DPS, starting with two specs, moving up our ranks. First up is Beastmaster Hunter, who we definitely undervalued in the preseason. BM has quickly climbed the ladder as the most popular DPS in Mythic Plus by a pretty big margin, even eclipsing the lead Rhett Paladin had last season. The reason for this? Damage. Of course, BM did see some recent nerfs to its tier set, but just like Demon Hunter, its damage was high enough already that this shouldn't really matter. Hunter also has better utility than we expected, with Binding Shot actually being quite useful in some dungeons. On top of this, BM is quite easy to play and a surprisingly useful spec to have since it isn't punished nearly as hard by ranged mechanics with the ability to do full damage on the move. So with great damage and decent utility, we're moving BM up to reflect the current meta. The second range DPS climbing the ranks is Demonology Warlock. Last season, Demo suffered a big problem in Mythic Plus, which was the fact that it had a very complicated damage ramp build around Nether Portal and Tyrant, which made the spec feel a bit clunky to play. After a mini rework in 10.2, Demo might actually be ahead of the pack and is definitely competitive with Mage. It has virtually everything you would want in Mythic Plus, with good consistent damage, a profile that supports single target and AoE, decent control and utility all combined with a powerful defensive kit. The main difficulty of Demo is being proactive with stops, as Shadow Fury does have a cast time. But luckily with Curse of Tongues, this issue can be mitigated. And speaking of Curse of Tongues, this is definitely slept on, especially with Amplify Curse, as it comes in handy against mobs that chain cast and is generally a good addition to any comp. With our winners sorted, let's move on to the two ranged specs moving down our rankings. First up, we're going to be moving Arcane down a tier since it's clearly the weakest of all three mage specs. We were optimistic with Arcane due to its impressive tier set, but both Frost and Fire are simply better options. Frost seems to be more than just a fan favorite, as it's also the most consistent performer this season in Mythic Plus, with great priority damage and impressive AoE damage while being less reliant on cooldowns. Even though Arcane Mage can do some insane damage during its burst windows, and can even play a sniper role on some pulls, its DPS really falls off in between cooldown windows, which is a massive problem in a sporadic game environment where keeping momentum is vital for timing keys. The other spec moving down is Balanced Druid, who will be flapping its wings to land gracefully on the A tier. Now, to be clear, there is nothing inherently wrong with Boomkin, but right now competition among mages, demo warlocks, and BM hunters is so stiff that we really can't justify having Boomies on a tier higher. As always, Balanced Druids seem to scale quite well with key level and has some very good utility, but until its numbers are better than the other high tiers, it will be staying on A for now. With everyone accounted for, we have our updated rankings for range DPS in Season 3. To the surprise of absolutely nobody, Augmentation is still a great spec in Mythic Plus, and despite being considered an easy role, there are tons of ways to min-max its group contribution. With that said, competition is pretty tight among the high tiers, with Demo Warlocks, Mages, Boomkins, and BM Hunters all having an impressive showing going into the mid-season. Unfortunately, both Shadow Priest and Ellie Shaman seem to still be the weakest options, so we're hoping to see future tuning address some of their problems. To wrap up our tier list update, let's cover the two healers moving up the rankings. First up is Resto Druid, who will actually be moving up to the S tier to join Disc Priest and Mistweaver Monk. This came after a series of damage buffs to cat form abilities, which for a while allowed Druids to absolutely pump on a single target. Some of this damage was scaled back with recent tuning, but Resto Druids are still looking like a great option. With that said, Druid might feel a bit GCD capped in higher keys, which can make it harder to weave in damage globals with maintenance healing. But on fights like Resin, where there is less healing needed overall, Resto Druids are able to do an absurd amount of damage for a healer. Speaking of which, we will also be moving Resto Shaman up to the B tier after reconsidering its performance so far this season. Shaman is currently doing alright in terms of representation, and after a few minor buffs on December 5th, we definitely think we undervalued them since our initial video. While you might not see many Resto Shamans on the front page, they are still highly competitive. Unfortunately, there is one healer we overvalued in the preseason, who will be moving down in our rankings. Preservation of Ochre will be swapping places with Resto Druid, dropping down to the A tier for this update. Again, being on the A tier isn't bad, but Preservation has some potential issues for higher keys. 
For one, its mana can be an issue on intense tyrannical fights, where it doesn't have the same efficiency as other top tier healers like Monks with Mana T and Disc with a near permanent mind bender. So while Preservation might still be one of the best healers for dealing AoE damage, its mana efficiency and weaker healing output can become an issue in higher keys. Before we recap, we need to discuss a wildcard healer. For now, we're going to be keeping Holy Paladin on the A tier despite some concerns from the community. Holy Paladin healing output does feel noticeably low right now, to the point where it feels like healing cooldowns aren't really safe to use for damage anymore in higher keys. While sending a few CDs to squeeze out more damage globals seem to work with God Comp, it's much more challenging now, especially since more hard casting is needed. But at the end of the day, Holy Paladins are still Paladins, having arguably the best overall toolkit for Mythic Plus. So while healing might feel very limited in high keys, Holy Paladins are still a fantastic option in low to mid-level keys, and with the whole community complaining, we could definitely see some buffs in the near future. This brings us to our updated tier list for healers in Season 3. Disc Priests, Mistweaver Monks, and Resto Druids are the current standouts in the meta thanks to a combination of high damage and unique utility. Right now, there's a pretty substantial gap between both Priest specs, which was also reflected in recent hotfixes with slight nerfs to Disc and a few superficial buffs to Holy. Just like tanks though, all healers are in a pretty decent spot and are fully capable of pushing plus 25 keys and beyond. Before you go, be sure to visit skillcap.com using the link below. We've been working with cutting edge players from Echo and Method to make some amazing courses available on our brand new Mythic Plus site. Here you can learn the hidden secrets of your class as you discover tricks used by top players that allow you to maximize your DPS, healing, and survivability while also learning some cool tips on how to use your utility, just like MDI and TGB caliber players. Right now, we are building courses for everyone, so if your class isn't represented today, be sure to check back later, where we plan to have most specs fully ready by the holidays. We're so confident our website works that we even offer a rating gain guarantee if you don't add at least 500 points to your IO score while using our guides. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.